Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this false door in the style of an old farmhouse kitchen door. It's really easy to make and I've added some lovely hinges and a handle and a bolt which are all available to purchase in my Etsy shop and I've made the mortise lock you can see there and the bunch of keys which add a really nice detail. Coming up is a list of the tools that you'll need and in the description box down below I've included the cut-in list. OK, so we're going to begin by scoring grooves into the door and to do that you'll need a flathead screwdriver and I always use the smallest one in the set and a steel rule and we're going to begin by making pencil marks across the top and bottom of the door for where we want the grooves to go. Now because it isn't quite divisible by 11 millimetres or 7 sixteenths of an inch we're going to make the first pencil mark at 11.5 millimetres or 29 sixty-fourths of an inch. So just do a little pencil mark at the top there and then you can continue um, in 11 millimetre increments or 7 sixteenths of an inch increments. So go along the top like that. So that will just give us a slightly wider um, groove at the start and sort of, well, each side of the door. Like that, and then turn the piece. And you want to place the rule so it's just below that pencil line and that's just to allow for the thickness of the screwdriver tip. And then just begin by making a very faint score along the wood. And then you can go a little bit deeper. And maybe one more time. And that will score the groove into the wood. So don't go too um, hard with the screwdriver, first of all, as you might find it tends to sort of go off track, gets into another sort of bit of the grain, and you'll have a, a sort of wonky groove. So just do a nice light score to begin, and then a couple more times. Go all the way across. And then you can turn the piece to do the final couple of grooves just so that your ruler doesn't um, rock over the end. And then take a piece of fine grade sandpaper and this is a 600 I'm using here and then just fold it into a nice sharp crease and then just work it along the groove and that will just remove any rough edges that are inside the groove. Do that all the way along and then you can use a soft paintbrush just to get rid of all the dust and then turn the door onto its side and we're going to make a pencil mark 97 millimeters or three and eleven sixteenths of an inch from what will become this top edge. And that's for the placement of our central door moulding. So 97 millimetres, three and eleven sixteenths of an inch. And then turn it around and again place the rule just below those pencil lines and you can then join those up like that. 
Okay, so we're now going to attach our door mouldings. So I've got some glue here, which I've dispensed onto a piece of card, and I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it. So take the first moulding. When I was cutting the pieces for this door, I particularly used um, a piece of wood that had like quite a lot of grain showing on it, and, and like a bit of a sort of darker grain as well. And even though I'll be painting over it, I will be sanding back a little bit, so I thought that might show through and might look quite nice on this sort of particular style of door. So glue the top one into place so it's flush with that top edge of the door. You just run your finger along there to make sure that it is. In fact, I'll just use one of the um, door surround strips just to put there and press them both towards it. That way you know you're getting a nice straight line. Use a spare cocktail stick to remove the excess glue. And then the central one we want to sit just above that pencil line we made. And you can put it into place so it's just sort of hiding that line. And then you haven't got to worry about erasing it or sanding it off. Press that down like that. Again, remove your excess glue and the final one along that bottom edge and there I've got a bit of a, a dark smudge on that one and I'm going to have that showing. Normally I would place any defects sort of to the back because I want this sort of, especially the bottom of the door to look like it's sort of been kicked about a bit as people have gone in and out. I'm going to have that facing towards the front. It's always worth thinking about when you're going through your wood box as well. Think about the project you're doing and if you know it would benefit it to have sort of wood that looks a bit knocked or marked. If you've seen some of my shed projects, you'll know I've used wood that's even had sort of holes in it for particular pieces of furniture. Again, I'm just going to press that against that strip. Make sure I've got a nice flat edge along the bottom there. And then, as you can see, as the wood starts to dry, it begins to curl away from the wood. So it's always important to secure pieces together when the glue's drying. And I'm going to use clothes pegs. Get as many on there as you can. You can use your mini clamps if you've got quite a few of them. I've got more clothes pegs, so that's why I'm using these. And I'm actually just going to place one in the centre at the top and bottom as well. And that can now be left to dry, and then we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the clothes pegs or clamps and then just sand along each edge of the door to make sure you've got a nice flush edge. And to do that, just go along the sandpaper in one direction. And I've already actually done both sides of this. And then take the diagonal door mouldings and to get the size, you want to put the corner of the first one at the corner of this top moulding. So just place it there like that and then the top um, edge at the corner of the central moulding. So let me just hold that up and show you. So this corner should be level with the corner of that top moulding and then this corner here should be level with the top corner of the central moulding on that side. And then you want to do a little pencil mark going in the line of the moulding and that's where we'll be doing our cut, straight across from that corner. And the same down here, straight into the corner again. And pop that there. And then you can just position your ruler between those two pencil marks. Remember you're cutting straight into the corner.
It's always a little bit more difficult cutting against the grain of the wood. So you may have to do a few more scores than normal. And that one as well. And then you can just check that you've got a perfect fit there and if not you may just have to trim a little bit more off. I've got a bit of a gap there and I can see actually where I haven't gone right to the pencil line so I'll just trim across there. A tiny little bit as well. And just check that again. Yes, that's a nice fit this time. So that will go there like that. And then we want to do the same with this one so that it's going in the same direction. And always measure again rather than sort of just cutting it the same as that because slight misplacement of this central um, moulding will make the size different. And then these two pieces can be glued into place. Press that down. Remember to have your spare cocktail stick handy for the excess glue. Especially important if you're going to be varnishing or wood stain in the door. Varnish or wood stain won't take over glue residue. Once again, I'm going to use clothes pegs to secure these into place. You can always use a little bit of masking tape for bits that you can't sort of quite get to. And once again, that piece can be left to dry. Okay, so again, once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the clothes pegs. And then I've gone over with sandpaper um, wrapped around a sanding block and just gone over the whole door, just so I've got a nice flush, flat um, piece. And then brush off the sanding dust with your soft brush. And then for the next part, you'll need your mitre guillotine. Got mine here and I've set it at the 45 degree angle and I want to cut one of the door surrounds, so the longest um, door surround and I just want to cut an angle in the end. So have it on there like that. Make your cut, lovely and easy with these mitre guillotines. I've done a, a video um, about these in the My Favourite Tools series so you can see how they work, how they go together and what they will actually cut. They really are a great tool to have in your toolbox. And then just shut that down and then line it up so that the um, lowest part of the mitre join there is at the top of the door. And then you can make a pencil mark along the bottom for where we need to cut the straight edge. And I'm going to set that to zero degrees. Unlock it. 
And I just want to place the blade so it's just in front of that um, little pencil mark. Cut again. And then I'm going to do that with the remaining long door surround. So 45 degree angle. Make the first cut. Lock that down. Oops. Place it so the lowest part of the angle is at the top of the door. Draw a pencil line across the bottom and then make my straight cut. Like that. And that will go there. And then for the shorter one, you can start just by making um, the first mitre join, so the 45 degree angle, like that. And then you want to, oops, keep throwing that down. And then you want to line it up with that side, so where it will go at that edge of the door, where it will actually join in with the first surround. And then you can hold it all in place and then come over here and make the mark where the next mitre join needs to start. So just level with the inside of that door surround. So that line there is where the join will need to start and it will be opposite to the first one, so we'll be coming this way. And I always just draw the line on just so I know which way to put it into the mitre cutter. I've done that many times when I've cut it the wrong way. So that will go in like that. Move it along a little tiny bit. And you've got the line on that sort of blue rubber bit there to help you. like that. Shut the mitre cutter down and then that should be a nice fit at the top of the door there. Oops. Now I can't hold that up and show you until um, it's all glued together but that just fits lovely at the top there and now we're going to glue these around the outside. So start by applying glue along one side of the door, doesn't matter where you start. My glue's going a little bit tacky as well. Like that, pop that back down on your surface and then press it up against the side of the door. Making sure both of them are flat against the work surface and that the top of the door is right at the bottom of that um, mitre angle. Press them together. And also this, you probably can't see it, but this surround had a big sort of dint in it as well where it had been lent up against something so I've chosen that piece to come at the front of my door. Make it look like another one of those sort of knocks and scrapes. You can then do the other side if you like, while that one's sort of drying. Or you can work your way around. Lay that one down as well. Press that up against it. Again, making sure the mitre angle is level with the top of the door. Press it all together. And then you can attach the top piece. Push that into there. Again, pressing it flat against your work surface. 
That piece can now be left to dry off and then it will be ready for painting. So to make my door easier to paint I've secured some masking tape sticky side up here to a old sheet of card and I'm just going to stick the door to it like that and then I can paint without getting anything on my hands. Again I'm using the um, colour that I mixed from the mushroom and the country cream so the lighter colour that I've also used for the windows. Don't forget to go along um, the sides of the door as well. Okay, so I applied two coats of paint to the door and I've given it a gentle sand all over. And then what you can do now is take your steel rule and your flathead screwdriver and just line the rule up with each um, of the door um, surrounds, so where the actual gaps in the door would be. And I've already actually done this top one, but I'll just show you what I did. Line the ruler up and then just bring your... Um, screwdriver across as though you were sort of making a groove and do that along each of the surrounds And then what that actually does is create more of a gap rather than it looking just like one piece. So then it looks like the door is actually closed inside the surrounds rather than attached to it. Do the remaining side as well. And then while I've got the screwdriver out, I just want to do some ageing on the door, and especially at the bottom here. And how I do it is just sort of dig the edge of the screwdriver into the bottom of the door, just at random just to make sort of like some little cracks just sort of push the screwdriver into the wood Maybe you've got some bigger marks you might have a few scratches knocks and scrapes and the thing with this I was saying when I did the same to the um, chimney breasts around is not to go too over the top because once you start you do sort of get a little bit carried away some old marks there in the surrounds be the wood sort of quite old and starting to split. I'm just going really lightly with this screwdriver to do that and I'll sand again as well and that will take away any of the sort of harshness. And think as well about where the um, sort of door lock will be and that would have, have had a lot of sort of handling over the years. Maybe the door might be a bit marked and chipped there. I should be having some coat hooks up here so same thing again where people have been reaching up the coats. Maybe where bags have been hung. There's some marking. Just sort of think about what you're going to be doing with your door and make the marks accordingly. You can have a bit of fun with it, but don't go too mad. <laughs> Which I probably am now, but like that. And then I sense that I should stop now. <laughs> so I'm going to sand over it again, and this is just with the fine grade sandpaper. 
and then I'm actually going to take a harsher paper as well and this is a 180 and I'm just going to wear away again some of the paint again in the same sort of areas where wear and tear would have occurred I actually want to take it back to the bare wood okay so now my door is suitably aged I'm going to start attaching the door furniture and I'm starting with these black um, hinges I'm going to attach those one at the top one at the bottom and I'm just using my wood glue to attach these and these are fixed but I'm going to put the what would be the sort of movable part onto the door surround and I'm just attaching them by eye as well I'm not measuring for the centre there of that top moulding just make sure that looks straight before the glue begins to take and these are all bits that you'll be able to find in my Etsy shop and then I've got a bolt set down here which I'm going to put at the bottom this is called a sliding bolt set the part will fix to the door and then there's a little part to go onto this around just put that there like that and then just make sure that the sliding part goes through properly push that down again and then I've got this just pull handle here and this was um, actually originally gold and I painted that just using um, matte black paint if you sort of key up the handle first which means sort of sand it with a gentle sandpaper it makes the um, surface less shiny and the paint is more likely to adhere to it and I think I'm going to have that up there starting to look really good the bolt keeps coming open not a very good uh, security bolt <laughs> like that and then I'm actually now going to make a mortise lock um, using wood so we'll do that next okay so I've just cut here a piece of 1.5 millimeter thick wood measuring 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch by 11 millimeters high, 7 sixteenths of an inch, and then I've just cut a section of it off like that. And then I'm going to take my scribe tool here and I'm going to sort of put a what would be like a nail in each corner or a nail hole. There as well. And then in this one as well, a little nail hole at the top and bottom. And then in this one I want to do like a keyhole, so I'll do a hole like that. A bit bigger than the nail holes. And then just do like a little score going up to it. I actually want that to go through because I want to make a key, so I'm actually going to cut through that as well. And then just holding that in your hand, you can just gently round over each edge. Make it look slightly beveled. Like that. And the same with that piece as well, just on the three sides. And then I want to paint these. I'm going to attach them to a piece of card. So you just want to attach the corner of each one to the sticky side of the masking tape. And then I'm using a matte black emulsion paint just to paint those. Make sure you get around the edges as well. They can then be left to dry. Okay, so whilst the mortise lock is drying, I want to make a little sort of key fob with a couple of keys and these are out of a little set and I've painted them black. And then I've just got a little bit of fuse wire here and a 
um, thin piece of 0.8mm thick um, wood that I'm going to make the key fob out of. So for the key fob just cut a piece of wood and you don't want it to be very big that's probably about three eighths of an inch maybe make it a little bit shorter just over a quarter of an inch I'm going to trim that as well make it a little bit thinner like that and then I just very carefully want to round over each corner like that and then I want to take my old scribe because it's got a thinner point and I'm just going to make a hole in there very carefully and I'm doing it carefully because I don't want the wood to split and I've got some 0.5 millimeter rigging hemp here I'm going to cut a bit of that off and I want to thread it through the hole in the key fob to thread the keys onto there as well I'm just going to tie that into a knot I'll we'll sort of put a couple of cocktail sticks through to hold the string so that you can keep a loop coming on that side. Probably not like that. Pull that nice and tight and then snip off the ends. And then out of the piece of wire here, I just want to make a little circle. So curl one end around the cocktail stick. Like that. So you've sort of got a loop with a tail on it. Like that. And then I'm going to just trim off that piece of wire. And then that as well can go through the string and thread the string sort of into the loop. Pull the string through like that and then press the wire together. Like that. So we've got a key there that will go into the door, which will look like a key. These should now be dry. So take the piece of wire and just push it through the little hole you made as the keyhole. You can fold the wire over at the back of the lock. And then lay that down and where the wire sits you can make a little groove to actually press it into. Actually use the craft knife for that. Be very careful of your fingers. And this is just so when we attach the lock to the door, the wire will fit into this little groove I'm making. Now we can attach it to the door. So make sure the key is pushed into the keyhole and sitting in the groove at the back. And it's a little bit fiddly because you've got the weight of the keys at the front of the door. That piece 
these goes on there. I'm going to leave a tiny little gap between them. I really like how those little keys look on there. So there's just one more um, bit of ageing I want to do and then we can fit the door into place. Okay, so I've got the pastel chalks here again. Um, cotton pad and a piece of paper. And this time I just want to use a little bit of brown. Maybe a bit of that sort of charcoal grey again. So I'm just going to mix those up. the brown on there and I just want to add a sort of few marks um, to the door again where it would um, sort of look a little bit mucky maybe around the the keyhole like that a little bit much on there good thing about these pastels is that you can sort of wipe them off if you put a little bit too much on And then maybe sort of along the bottom. Around the bolt there. A little bit around the handle. A bit up there where things would have been hung over the years. And I'll be adding some um, coat hooks on here. Okay, so again, there's danger of sort of going a little bit too mad when you're doing something like this so I'm going to stop there like that and there is the completed door so I'm now going to go and glue that into place and there is the door in place now I used wood glue over the entire back of the door and then held that into place until the glue began to take. And I think that looks pretty good. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you do have a go at making the door, I'd love to see how yours turns out. And you can share photographs of any of the things you make from my books or my YouTube channel in my group, Little Bits and Pieces by You. I'll pop a link below to my Facebook page and you can request to join the group from there. And please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you could give the video a thumbs up that would be appreciated too. And for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.